I'm John Boshin, and welcome to another installment of my classic industrial film showcase. In this issue, we'll be taking a look at a fun 1951 Technicolor cartoon entitled Good Wrinkles. A fun cartoon which uses the theme of Hollywood movie making to market and exploit the health benefits of prunes. The cartoon was commissioned by Sunsweet Growers Incorporated, also known as the California Prune and Apricot Growers Association, produced by Allsco Pictures, and made by Harmon and Ising Cartoons. It was distributed non-theatrically by the Modern Talking Picture Service Company. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, Sunsweet Growers Incorporated a farmer's co-op that was established in 1917 and had become well known over time for selling dried fruit took on an ambitious effort at creating a mascot cartoon character for one of their more popular products, dried prunes. Most recently, the company had enjoyed success in the field of sponsor motion pictures with their 1947 film entitled A Fortune in Two Old Trunks a live-action documentary film that was produced by a newly formed company called Allscope Pictures Incorporated. Allscope was a small film production outfit that was established with the intent of doing training films for the United States military and also sponsored motion pictures. Anyways, A Fortune in Two Old Trunks was a non-theatrical live-action documentary film that chronicled the foundations of California's prune industry with Louis Pellier during the 1800s and how Sunsweet Growers has further built upon these foundations and has continued to sell prunes into the post-World War II era. This particular film was well received by film critics and trade magazines such as Business Screen Magazine and even won some awards. The success of this film prompted Sunsweet and Osco Pictures to work together again, only this time take on a much more ambitious project in creating an animated cartoon which could introduce a mascot for one of their more popular products, Sunsweet Prunes. The result was our very lavish 1951 cartoon Good wrinkles. Now believe it or not, even though Allsco Pictures were the producers of the film, they were not at all capable of making a large-scale animated cartoon such as Good Wrinkles on their own. Allsco Pictures was a very small production company, and they were without an animation department and without a musical department. As a matter of fact, all the music that was heard throughout their films, such as A Fortune in Two Old Trunks and Good Wrinkles, was needle drop music, licensed from libraries such as the Capitol Records IQ Library, who I believe did supply the music heard throughout their films. To do the animation for the film, Allscope Pictures contracted Harmonizing Productions, a company that was run by an iconic cartoonist duo named Hugh Harmon and Rudolf Ising whose two talents together contributed immensely to our film and the animation heritage. To give you a brief overview of who they were though and how Good Wrinkles plays into their career, Harmon and Izzy met while working as animators for Walt Disney in the 1920s. They began their partnership together, Harmon and Izzy cartoons in the late 1920s following their departure from Disney. From 1930 through 1938, their partnership was responsible for a large number of animated cartoons and also the establishment of two iconic cartoon studios. Between 1930 and 1933, the two were contracted by notable film producer Leon Schlesinger to produce animated sound cartoons for distribution by Warner Brothers Pictures Incorporated. As a result, the two created the Looney Tunes series in 1930, a series which would be based around their cartoon star Bosco the Talking Kid, and the Merry Melody series in 1931, a series of one-shot cartoons based around music featured in the Warner Brothers musicals of the time. <laughs> Between 1930 and 1933, Harmon and Izzy were responsible for over 60 Warner Brothers cartoons consisting of both Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. This venture ended in 1933 due to a contract dispute Harmon and Izzy had with Leon Schlesinger. That's awful. 
Following their studio's departure from Schlesinger, Harmon and Ising signed a contract with MGM, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, to make a series of color cartoons. The result was their first color series, which at first were titled Metro Color Cartoons, and then were quickly renamed to Happy Harmonies, to rival the Silly Symphony color cartoons being produced by Disney. I should also note that it was with these series that Harmon and Ising debuted their musical staff logo as seen here, which would be featured on all of their MGM films, and also on their 1951 cartoon, Good Wrinkles. Between 1934 and 1937, Harmon and Ising's studio were responsible for 35 extravagant Happy Harmonies color cartoons. The first 12 which were filmed in two-color Technicolor, while the remaining 23 were shot in the three-strip Technicolor process. These films, which were shot in three-strip Technicolor, were extremely lavish, and to say that they made full use of the process is basically an understatement. Unfortunately, only after three years, the Happy Harmony series, despite the popularity and rave reviews, were put to an end by MGM, who pulled the plug on the harmonizing cartoon studio, due to overrunning costs necessary to make the films. However, MGM's tenure without Hugh Harmon or Rudolf Ising was short-lived, as after MGM failed to start a successful in-house cartoon studio, they hired them back individually to make cartoons for it to get going. Unfortunately, this would put an end to the Harmon and Ising Cartoon Studio Partnership, which would not be revived again until after World War II. Throughout 1938 and through 1942, the two worked as separate cartoon units for their producer Fred Quimby. And during this time, the two were individually responsible for a number of beautifully made MGM cartoons. However, as the cartoon studio was getting more established and starting to change with the times, both Harmon and Ising's ideas for where they wanted their careers to go changed as well. Hugh Harmon left MGM in April of 1941 to start his own production company, Hugh Harmon Productions, to take on much more ambitious projects such as an animated feature with Orson Welles. Unfortunately, this never finalized for a variety of reasons, and instead Harmon contributed his talents to the production of sponsored motion pictures. Rudolf Ising, on the other hand, stayed with MGM for one more year, until resigning from MGM following the outbreak of World War II, to join the military and take charge of the animation department of the first motion picture unit, a film division of the Army which specialized in the production of training films. Following the war, Rudolf Ising was discharged from the army and thus relieved of his post with the first motion picture unit animation department. He rejoined with Hugh Harmon in 1946 to reform Harmon and Ising cartoons. Unfortunately, despite their efforts to get several ambitious projects going, nothing ever really came of it and they did not enjoy the same success they had had during the pre-World War II era. Instead, they ended up devoting their talents to the production of educational and sponsored films, such as our 1951 film, Good Wrinkles. As of 2015, 1951's Good Wrinkles is the earliest known surviving film that was made by Hugh Harmon and Rudolf Ising following their studio's reformation. It's very well possible that other industrial films and other animated cartoons were made for different clients during this era. However, though, they have yet to turn up as of now. In terms of how Good Wrinkles plays into the careers of Hugh Harmon and Rudolf Ising, despite being a very lavish production, unfortunately the film is not quite as good as their earlier films that they did for Warner Brothers or MGM. However, though, it is a film that I personally like for a variety of different reasons, mainly for how it combines Hollywood filmmaking to market prunes and exploit their health benefits, thus giving us modern viewers and film buffs a nice dose of nostalgia. To give you a brief synopsis of the film, we the audience are introduced to Sonny the Prune at the grand premiere of his latest motion picture, which is being premiered at the iconic Grauman's Chinese Theater. We are officially introduced to Sonny by a cartoon character of notable radio commentator and screen narrator John Nisbet, who is commentating the event. 
Following Sonny's departure from the theater, Mr. Nisbet then gives us Sonny's life story of how he became a Hollywood star overnight. The way this film compares the life of a prune to the life of a movie star by using that whole rags to Hollywood riches theme is brilliant in my opinion and very clever. While the rags to Hollywood riches theme itself has been used numerous times in movies such as the 1937 and 1954 adaptions of A Star Is Born, Good Wrinkle stands out from these other films as it uses this whole Hollywood rags to riches theme as a way to educate its audience. One idea that is exaggerated throughout the film is how all prunes are plums, but not all plums are prunes. Kind of like how all movie stars are people, but not all people are movie stars. Now since the film- Well, um, this is a tad bit embarrassing. As I was saying, since the film deals a lot with Hollywood filmmaking, there's a lot of really cool Hollywood nostalgia present throughout the production, as different film genres and types are parodied to show off the benefits of prunes. The three main genres which are used in the film consist of the swashbuckler, the medical doctor drama, and also the wrestling boxing picture genre, all of which were apparently directed by Cecil B. DePrune, a play on the name of Cecil B. DeMille, who was a famous film director who did a number of large-scale epics for Paramount Pictures throughout the 1920s, 1930s, 40s, and 50s. While these little references are fun, probably my favorite part of the film is the very beginning, which parodies a large-scale Hollywood grand premiere at the Grauman's Chinese Theater to introduce Sonny. Grauman's Chinese Theater, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the venue, is in my opinion one of the most important and iconic movie palaces pertaining to our motion picture heritage. The theater was built in 1926, and was designed by the Mayer and Holler architectural firm for theater chain owner Sid Grauman. It was named Chinese Theater as its architecture made use of a Chinese Oriental style. Since its grand opening in 1926, the Hollywood-based venue has been the location of countless large-scale movie premieres. As Grauman's Chinese Theater was the location of many grand openings, it also made a number of appearances in films, probably more film appearances than any other theater in the world. Good Wrinkles is one of four animated cartoons that I'm aware of which features Grauman's Chinese Theater. Now going back to the grand premiere, one other detail that I personally find pretty cool is the character presence of John Nisbet. John Nisbet, as I stated earlier, was a well-known radio commentator and film narrator. In addition, he also did the narration to A Fortune in Two Old Trunks. To many historians and film buffs, he is best remembered for narrating his short subject series he did, John Nisbet's Passing Parade a documentary series that was produced by him, which reflected upon a variety of different topics, history events, and social issues of the era. Seeing the type of content that Nisbet often dealt with within these films, he was a very appropriate choice to narrate Good Wrinkles. Now interestingly, as Mr. Nisbet was a narrator, he hardly ever made any on-screen appearances, let alone an animated character appearance. Good Wrinkles is the only film that I am aware of that gives Mr. Nisbet an on-screen appearance. In many regards, I find this aspect of the film to be rather important. So that's some of the many little treats that are present in this production. So without further ado, grab yourself some delicious sunsweet prunes, sit back, and enjoy 1951's Good Wrinkles. Gentlemen, this is John Nesbitt bringing you the Hollywood premiere of Sonny Sweet in his latest picture, Good Wrinkles. Here he is now, and listen to those fans. 
There are many celebrities here, but tonight all eyes are on Sunny Sweet. Maybe I can break in here and get him to say a few words. How about this, eh? Please, Sonny, sign mine first. Here's mine. Yes, I know what you would have said. Six or seven prunes a day are good for you in every way. And that's good advice. There he goes, a Hollywood star now. But me tell you the story of how this local boy made good. Sonny comes from a famous French family in California. He was born on a balmy spring day. <laughs> and as any baby, at first he just lay there, drinking in the sunshine. As the months passed by, Sonny was nourished by Mother Nature with nutrient riches that poured down from the warm California sunshine and up from the rich soil in which the parent tree was rooted. By the time fall had come, Sonny was fully grown, ready to go into the world. to seek adventure in Hollywood. Well, Sonny was soon to find out that there was much new world of his. In the first place, he had never realized that all prunes are plums, but all plums are not prunes. For prunes, you see, are a special kind of plum that can be dried without fermenting. But Sonny qualifies, and his career as a movie star was well underway. He was soon to find out that there were many prunes from his family here at the studio, and that he would have the opportunity to work with some of them. Sonny's French prune family, sometimes called the Prune Dagen, is famous for its sweetness, flavor, and quality. Prunes of the French prune family run to the middle sizes. So when you see the words medium, large, or extra large on the package. Remember, these sizes refer to French prunes, which never grow so large as some other varieties, but which are never surpassed in sweetness and good eating quality. In his first picture, Sonny played the part of a French duke. In his regal costume, he fittingly represents true prune royalty. For French prunes are the most popular of all prunes. Quiet! Action! There are larger prunes, to be sure. Here's Pearl, one of Sonny's best friends. She is an imperial prune, and her family, which thrives in very few areas, is not sufficiently numerous to be a major factor in the prune industry. My, but she is a shy one, and rightly so. Well, she comes from a prune family that is shy in many ways, <laughs> especially at fruit-bearing time. From Pearl, Sonny learned that there were various other varieties of prunes, but most of them are grown only in small quantities and are not important on a commercial scale. She told him that should he come upon any members of the prune family grown in the Pacific Northwest, he would find them noticeably tart this tartness being due to a larger acid content and a slightly smaller sugar content than the French prunes grown in California.
Sonny finished his role as the Duke, and the studio assigned him almost immediately to a film in which he portrayed a world's champion prize fighter. He played many important parts in the movies, just as prunes in real life play an important part in keeping us healthy. his great supply of prune energy, movie actor Sonny winds up for the knockout punch. Sonny knocks out fatigue, just as prune sugar energy overcomes fatigue in our bodies. The average sugar content of French prunes is 49.5% which comes from their long natural ripening in the sun. Prune sugar is in the form of readily digestible carbohydrates, chiefly invert sugar, which is readily absorbed into the blood to do the job of supplying quick energy, so needed when the going gets a bit rough and the tired body needs a pickup. Now let's see some of the requirements for that good to feel good feeling. If you don't mind, I'll be scientific for a few moments. There is carotene, for instance, which is changed by the body to vitamin A. Prunes are an excellent source of carotene and therefore of this valuable vitamin, of which the minimum requirement is 5,000 international units per day. This is the vitamin that does so much to protect precious eyesight and is important for proper growth, too. Then there is riboflavin, one of the B-complex vitamins. Prunes have a higher riboflavin content than any other fruit. The average requirement of this vitamin is 1 and 8 tenths milligrams per day. It is needed for steady nerves, a clear skin, and good digestion, as well as for proper growth. Thiamine, also known as vitamin B1, contributes to healthy nerves, a good appetite, and proper growth. The daily requirement of thiamine is 1 and 2 tenths milligrams. Also, there is the mineral iron, so necessary for its blood regenerating powers and an essential part of every living tissue in the body. Your daily requirement of iron is 12 milligrams. This is Sonny's way of showing just how much good six or seven prunes a day can do for you. They furnish a great percentage of these essential needs of man. Six or seven quality prunes are approximately 50 grams of edible fruit, which furnish 27% of the average daily minimum requirement of vitamin A, 38.5% of the daily requirement of riboflavin or vitamin B2, 12.5% of the daily requirement of thiamine or vitamin B1, and 16 and 6 tenths percent of the average daily minimum requirement of iron to feel good. The story of Sonny's life as a movie star would never be complete without his most famous role as Dr. Sonny. It's a natural for him, for prunes can surely do much to keep us healthy and well. As every nurse and dietitian learns early in her training, prunes are highly effective as a gentle, natural aid to regularity. This is due partly to the abundance of soft fruit cellulose, food bulk in its natural and most valuable form, and partly to the presence of a specific laxative element, which has certain chemical and physiological properties similar to cathic and chlorogenic acids. Oh, Calling Dr. Sonny Sweet. Emergency, a room 208. Hey, Doc, emergency, room 208. Say, ah, hmm, coated tongue. Mm. 
Hmm. Most irregular, eh? But Dr. Sonny knows the answer. The patient will be well in no time. And now he says with the rest of us, it's good to feel good. Now let's turn from Sonny's Hollywood career and get a little better acquainted with his family background. We've found that prunes are unique in more than just their downright tastiness and food value. For example, there's the way prunes are harvested. In the springtime, they begin their gradual development and throughout the summer are richly nourished by Mother Nature. Finally, in August, they begin to ripen. However, the finest prunes are not picked like other fruit, but are allowed to hang in the sunshine until they're so plump and heavy with juicy goodness, they drop from the trees of their own weight. When nature says, you're ready, down they go. The soil has been previously turned and worked to a cushiony mattress to catch the falling fruit. And there they lie, purple and plump, all ready to be carefully gathered by hand. Now here we are at the plant. Let's see how plums become prunes by what is known as the dehydrating process. They are first put through a hot 15 second alkaline bath to slightly crack the skins and allow for more rapid evaporation of the moisture in the fruit. Next, they are thoroughly rinsed. Then they are spread in single layers on large trays to be dried. While open field drying was the only method employed for many years, this method has now been largely replaced by modern mechanical dehydrators. And it is in these dehydrators that the prune, as we know it best, actually comes to be. These are truly good wrinkles one place where wrinkles are looked upon as a sign of distinction. The next step is to sort the prunes according to size. As they pass over a series of graduated holes in the sorting conveyor, they drop through the holes they fit and are thus automatically graded. Prune sizes are designated by the number of prunes it takes to make a pound. Naturally, the fewer the prunes to the pound, the larger the individual prunes. The medium size is graded 67 or less prunes to the pound. The large size runs 53 prunes or less to the pound. Then comes the extra large size, which averages 43 prunes or less to the pound. Thus, you are reminded again, the fewer the prunes per pound, the larger the fruit. The final step before packaging is the special sun-sweet tenderized process. Using only heat and moisture, this process leaves the prunes plump and tender, which permits very rapid cooking, thus eliminating the vitamin loss, which sometimes results from longer preparation. From the tenderized process, the prunes are immediately packed steaming hot into parchment paper bags, which are enclosed in protective cartons. Also, as an added protection against air, dust, light, and heat, the cartons are in turn enclosed and sealed in a lustrous gold or silver foil wrapper. This hot packing and foil sealing ensures uniform moisture, tenderness, and fine eating quality throughout the contents of the package. In addition to protecting the full rich goodness of the fruit, the foil wrapper is an easy way to always identify your favorite brand. Fresh from the carton, the prunes are ready to be served in an infinite variety of ways. Raw, for example. The special tenderized process makes prunes so tender and good you can eat them just like candy right out of the box. 
and raw, they provide all the qualities of the natural fruit. Or prepare them in this simple way. Just fill a jar with prunes, add boiling water to cover, screw on the lid, let cool, then place in your refrigerator for several days. The longer they stand, the thicker the juice. This American breakfast tradition is delicious when served with a little cream, or with a dash of lemon, or just sitting pretty in their own juice. For serving with meat, spiced and pickled prunes. Mmm, mmm. Or prune pie, a tempting luscious dessert with a billowy meringue that can be put together in a twinkling. Prune whip is another famous American dish, the perfect dessert for a perfect meal. Here's another wonderful treat, prune birthday cake. A tender, moist, fruity cake, just right for every day of the year and for special occasions too, such as Junior's birthday party. Our country, however, isn't the only one that knows all about the delect uses of prunes. They are a favorite fruit in many countries. Let's see what the people of Scandinavia know about prunes. If you should find expected guests are on the way, and a quick sweetbread is what you'll need, just try prune biscuit roll. Prepare about two cups of your favorite biscuit mix by merely adding milk. Then roll the dough to a quarter inch thickness and spread evenly with one and a half cups of chopped and pitted cooked prunes. You then top the prunes with a quarter cup of melted butter one half cup of sugar spiced with cinnamon or nutmeg and carefully roll like a jelly roll. Then place the roll in a buttered baking dish and bake in a moderate oven 45 minutes to an hour. When cool, the roll is cut into slices and there you are. As easy as that, coffee time's complete with dainty prune biscuit rolls. Here's a dessert. The vanilla cream portion in this bowl is a blend of eggs, quarter, cold. Delicious. Another delightful dessert of theirs, which can be served more cold, is prunes with meringue. The meringue is spread over the prunes, and the dessert is eaten until the top is golden brown. If you have a sweet tooth, serve it with cream or vanilla sauce, and it's a mouth-watering treat. Another favorite of theirs, prune souffle, as light and fluffy as a dream. And believe it or not, the Scandinavians even make a soup of prunes, which they serve cold. A Swedish specialty, no doubt, but try it sometime. You might like it. Scandinavian cooks use prunes a great deal with meat, especially with fatty meats like pork. One method is to stuff spare ribs with pitted prunes before baking. This adds a delicate, succulent flavor to the ribs. Another popular method of theirs is to serve boiled prunes right along with fried or baked pork chops. Yet another delicious way they combine meat with prunes is to place the prunes on slices of pork, rolling them till crisp and brown. And here is an idea of theirs that works wonders with fowl. Stuff chicken, turkey, or duck with prunes. The sweetness and richness of the prunes really enhances the flavor of the fowl. Yes, there are hundreds of ways to serve prunes. And to help in preparing these you have seen, plus countless other prune delicacies, SunSweet has gathered together a wonderful collection of prune recipes which have been put into a handy book. Merely mail your request to SunSweet, Box 670, San Jose, California, for a free copy. However you serve these prunes, you can be sure they are a delicious, full-flavored, perfect eating fruit. Just as important, they are rich in nature's own vitamins and valuable food minerals. A quick energy food that gives children and adults alike that good to feel good feeling. Serve prunes often. They are good anyway, anytime. So there in all his regal splendor sits Sonny. Proud of his royal heritage, proud too of the golden carton which he sponsors, and which is your guarantee of extra tenderness and extra goodness in the prunes you buy. Your sure guide 
to good wrinkles when you go shopping for prunes. For seven prunes a day are good for you in every way. Buy some sweet prunes and you'll agree. Cooked or all their heavenly. Nothing like giving a prune the Hollywood red carpet treatment. Now believe it or not, despite the film dealing heavily with Hollywood movie making, the film was not distributed to movie theaters. If it was, it would have been very few. Distribution of the film was carried out by the Modern Talking Picture Service Incorporated. They distributed industrial films to theaters and also to schools, factories, public auditoriums, and community clubs. In addition to distributing films, the company would also provide projection equipment and projectionists to exhibit films in venues that were without projection equipment. Good Wrinkles was distributed in 16mm prints to merchants and grocers who sold Sunsweet prunes. These individuals would then arrange for screenings of the film within schools, community clubs, such as a Rotary Club, or at a public auditorium. Anyways, an interesting note regarding that live-action footage that was shot for Good Wrinkles. While the vast majority of the footage, most specifically the footage that features the Sunny Sweet Jar, was shot specifically for this film by either Allscope Pictures or Harmon and Ising, some of it was actually recycled from a fortune of two old trunks. This recycled footage consists of the montage of recipes to use prunes for. For comparison's sakes, here's the original sequence from A Fortune of Two Old Trunks, which features different narration by John Nisbet and also a very different musical score. This American breakfast tradition is delicious when served with a little cream, or with a dash of lemon, or for that matter just sitting pretty in their own juice. For serving with meat, spiced and pickled prunes, mmm, -hmm. or prune pie, a tempting, helpful dessert. Prune whip is another famous American dish, the perfect dessert for a perfect meal. Here is another treat, seven-day prune cake. It gathers moisture as it stands and keeps for a full week without loss of flavor. I take it Mr. Nisbet was a big fan of prunes. Now, not all the footage featured in Good Wrinkles was recycled from a fortune in two old trunks, as several shots were prepared exclusively for the film by either Allscope Pictures or by Harmon and Ising. Two of these shots, which were prepared exclusively for Good Wrinkles, are the shots that featured the Sunny the Prune Jar in the kitchen. Apparently, as Sun Sweet was ambitiously attempting to create a mascot character to represent their product, they also apparently made various different Sunny the Prune merchandise. One of the more fascinating pieces of Sunny merchandise that was commissioned by Sun Sweet is the Sunny the Prune stuffed toy that was produced by the R. Dakin Company Incorporated. These images come from the courtesy of the Yali Willis Museum of Kitsch. As you can see here, it's a direct replica of Sonny in his tuxedo, as worn in the film by him at his grand premiere. One thing the toy had on it was this little tag that had recommendations to the child or toy owners on how to eat prunes and be healthy. Despite Sunsweet's ambitious attempt at creating Sonny the Prune, it's hard to say how well the character performed. One somewhat strange observation I've made is that not a lot of attention was really given to the cartoon. From looking through back issues of Business Screen Magazine, a lot of attention was given to A Fortune of Two Old Trunks, a film which even won the awards. Good Wrinkles, on the other hand, barely received any recognition from the same magazine. The review for the film that was featured in Business Screen Magazine was actually very small when compared to their review of A Fortune of Two Old Trunks. Interestingly, Business Screen Magazine's review did not sing the same praises the way their earlier review for A Fortune and Two Old Trunks did. It doesn't appear either that any other films with Sonny the Prune were ever made. It's very well possible that the cartoon character in the film underperformed with audiences. 
Two factors that may have contributed to this underperformance may have been the lack of exposure and exhibition of Sonny the Prune, and also may have been because of some of the recent changes in advertising trends. By the time the 1950s arrived, television had become the next major form of mass communication. Unlike movies and public exhibitions, where people had to go out to both see and hear a moving image, with television, people could stay at home and listen and watch their content. Other established advertising cartoon characters, which already existed prior to World War II, such as the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company's Cool Penguins, were already appearing in television commercials by the time Good Wrinkles was made. These animated TV commercials ran under three minutes, featured catchy music, and memorable slogans. Many of these films successfully marketed their product and cartoon mascot as they were quick, snappy, and to the point. In addition, these television commercials were broadcasted during popular television programs. Good Wrinkles, on the other hand, did not quite follow any of these recent trends. And instead, it was a 22-minute long film that was made specifically for group showings. Good Wrinkles was eventually shown on television, but was done so in the late 1950s, a bit after the mascotting attempts of Sonny had passed. Now, if all Scope Pictures had made a series of television commercials in the early 1950s, similar to what was now being done with other mascot characters, it's possible the character may have caught on a bit better with audiences. Regardless of this issue though, which appears to just be more of an issue of not following recent trends, Good Wrinkles is still a pretty decent film in my opinion. One other detail that I like about the cartoon is how it breaks down the factory sequence of how prunes are made through cartoon animation. As a way to make the factory sequence a little more appealing than just using live action footage. The factory process was actually documented entirely in live action by Allscope for their film, A Fortune in Two Old Trunks. In case you're curious how the cartoon animation compares to the live action footage, here's the sequence from A Fortune of Two Old Trunks. Once again, it features narration by John Nisbet and is accompanied by lovely needle drop music from the Capitol Records High Q Library. Enjoy! directly from the orchards to the dehydrators, the boxes of prunes are taken from the trucks and placed on conveyors which carry the fruit to the washers, where the prunes are thoroughly cleaned in a hot water bath or spray. From the cleansing bath, the fruit is spread on trays which are automatically stacked prior to being placed in the dehydrator for the curing process. Much of this automatic equipment was developed by engineers employed by the SunSuite Cooperative. In reality, the prunes at this stage are still fresh plums. When the moisture has been removed and the plums have been properly dried, then they are prunes. All prunes are plums, but all plums are not prunes. Prunes are a very special variety of plums that can be dried without fermenting, and in a very real sense, they are not prunes until they have been dried. To remove the moisture, the stacks of filled trays are then placed in the dehydrator, a modern improvement of former drying methods. Here, under carefully controlled conditions of temperature and humidity, the prunes are perfectly cured in from 18 to 24 hours. When the curing process has been completed, the trays are removed from the dehydrator, the prunes are taken from the trays and fed through a conveyor into large bins. Here, during a short period, they undergo a sweating process which equalizes the remaining moisture in the fruit and gives the entire lot an even uniform texture and appearance. The cured fruit is now trucked from the dehydrator to a packing house. At the packing house, 
Each bin is weighed and recorded to the credit of the grower. Then carried by lift truck to a machine, which by tilting dumps the prunes onto a shaker to remove leaves and stems. An elevator then carries the prunes to a grader where they are automatically sorted by sides. To facilitate the passage of the prunes over the grader, this machine mechanically spreads the prunes evenly along its length. This process is a good example of the highly mechanized procedure used throughout. Handwork is reduced to a minimum and efficient mechanical methods are used wherever possible. Prune sizes are based on the count per pound and constant check on the accuracy of the grading is maintained by an operator who frequently weighs sample lots and physically counts the number of prunes per pound. The prunes fall from the grader into large bins, each bin containing prunes of the same size. The bins are taken by lift truck to a storage area where the prunes remain until required for processing and packaging. Fruit already grated is taken from storage and spread on belts. These carry the fruit past lines of gloved operators. Here, sunsweet prunes receive a thorough and careful inspection to make certain that only the highest quality fruit is packaged. After inspection, the fruit is passed through a continuous flow of hot water in an ingenious revolving washer. Before the prunes are packaged in visible bags or cartons, they are again thoroughly heated with boiling water. This cleanses and sterilizes the fruit and makes it easier to pack. It is at this point that sunsweet prunes get the special tenderized treatment that make them quicker cooking and better eating. This process employs only heat and moisture scientifically applied. Nothing is added to the fruit, nothing is taken away. After the prunes have been tenderized, they receive another inspection by gloved operators just before they drop through the stainless steel chute which carries them to the packaging line. Science plays no small part in the processing of prunes. In the laboratory, the fruit is continually checked for tenderness, quality, and sugar content. The laboratory is not only concerned with the fruit itself, but new packaging materials are continually tested, and new technical processes to improve the good keeping qualities are under constant study. Every step of the progress of the fruit, from orchard to package, is subject to continuous laboratory check. Meantime, the cartons are being prepared. Automatic machines open, shape, and line the cartons and send them on in a continuous line. As the cartons move on an endless belt, they are filled automatically. The freshly processed prunes are hot packed in these cartons to ensure uniform quality of the carton contents. Operators remove them from the belt and add or take away prunes to obtain the correct weight. As the cartons travel along, the fruit is gently and automatically pressed down to proper level. The cartons now go to the sealing machine where the top is closed and sealed tight. Then the foil wrapper is applied and also sealed tight. Thus, threefold protection is provided for the fruit. First by the carton interliner, next by the carton shell itself, and third by the insulating aluminum foil wrapper. Here they come, gleaming foil sealed cartons of top quality California prunes.
packed in cases and ready to be shipped to the markets of the world. The fruit starts its journey by truck, by rail, and by ship. Throughout the world, wherever you go, sunsweet prunes contribute to the enjoyment and health of everyone. Well, there you have it. Everything you ever wanted to know about prunes during the post-World War II era. If you enjoy good wrinkles and also the clips that I showed from a fortune in two old trunks, both films are available from the Prelinger archives on archive.org. Those two films, along with thousands of others, are available for both viewing and downloading, all from the courtesy of Rick Prelinger. So thank you once again for joining me on my classic industrial film showcase. I look forward to seeing you again in my next installment. Oh, and before we go, remember... Your seven prunes a day are good for you in every way. Buy some sweet prunes and you'll agree. Cooked or all, they're heavenly. Ha <laughs> ha